Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a natural logarithm equation or a log equation with ln. We have ln x plus 1 equals ln x plus 1. Now, the, one of the first questions that you should think about is, is this an identity? Is this always true? And the answer is no. If it was, we would only be checking the domains. For example, if you had an equation like ln you know, x times y equals ln x plus ln y, then you would just require x, y, and x, y, or x, y, x, and y to be all positive. Okay? Great. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm, I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and subtract ln x from both sides. So my goal is to use some identities or formulas, uh, some properties of logarithms, in other words. And that is called the, the quotient property. So if you subtract ln x, you get this. And then we do know that if you log a quotient, then you get difference of the log. So in other words, if you have log a over b, that's equal to log a minus log b. But of course, here the base is not specified. If you don't write it, it's usually base 10. But if you put a little base here, like base x, base x, they all have to be the same base, by the way. Can they be different bases and still this property could still hold? That would be a specific scenario. But in general, no. So. Now we have the difference of two logs, right, in natural logs. So we can turn it into the log of a quotient. So in this case, it, it will become ln x plus 1 over x. Okay? And obviously, this changes the domain of the uh, original equation because in the original equation, we do need x plus 1 to be greater than 0 and x to be greater than 0, right? At the same time, in the second case, we do need x plus 1 over x to be positive. That doesn't mean that they both have to be positive. They can both be negative as well. So here, for example, this can be negative, this can be negative, and the, co the quotient would still be positive and good for the second one. Okay, so those equations in that sense are different. But anyways, this is equal to 1 under those conditions. And then... We're just going to think about it. There's a couple ways to think about it. You can do e to the power both sides or think about the definition of logarithm, which says if you have log a with base b equaling x, or let's use a different variable, say c, then this indicates b to the power c equals a. That's the very definition of logs. And of course, this is if and only if statement. Okay? So we can do that since the base is e here, it's invisible, but e to the power 1 is going to equal x plus 1 over x, which is e, right? So from here, we can solve for x. Let's go ahead and cross multiply x plus 1 equals ex. And let's go ahead and bring all the x's on the same side, and we're going to get 1 equals ex minus x. And then 1 equals x times the quantity e minus 1. And then finally, you can divide both sides by e minus 1. And that's, an, that's going to give you x equals 1 over e minus 1. And this is going to be about 0 0.582. So that's going to be the x value for which this equation holds. And again, we do need the x, x plus 1 values to satisfy the domain of this function. Okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and then we're going to be looking at the graph of these two functions. Second method. Those two methods are pretty close because you can't really do this problem in a you know, dramatically or drastically different way. They're going to be super close. So in the first method, we did use the quotient property. This time, we're going to use the product. Because instead of subtracting ln x, let's go ahead and keep it as is, and Let's just condense the right-hand side. So you can basically write 1 as ln e. And then you can basically, and you could do the same thing with the first method. Then we can just com condense these two things. 
Condensing basically means if you have log A plus log B, you just write it as log A times B. And usually these are put in parentheses to avoid confusion. A lot of times it's understood if it's just a single term. Anyways, so from here we can do the following ln x plus 1 equals ln x times e, or it's better to write e times x, or just ex from here. And then we have lns on both sides. We can do e to the power of both sides, or if ln a is equal to ln b, that implies a equals b. Because ln function is 1 to 1, it's an injection, so on and so forth. Okay? So, what do we get? We get the equality x plus 1 is equal to ex as before. And then from here, you do the same thing, ex minus x equals 1. And then you kind of factor out x and you get e minus 1 equals 1. And finally, x becomes 1 over e minus 1. And I think we said that this is about 0 0.582. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions. And we'll just finish up with that. So I graph both of these for you, ln x plus 1 and ln x plus 1. So the one is outside. So these graphs are obviously very similar, but the second one, the purple one, I think that's a purple color, right? If I'm not colorblind. So with that, uh, we actually have, both of them are like the same type, the growth type functions, but the second one is elevated. So it's kind of shifted upwards. That's why uh, there is always going to be a distance between these two, and the distance actually, the gap is going to increase, which means that these two graphs are only going to intersect at a single point, and that is the point you're looking at. But we were trying to solve for x, so that will be 1 over e minus 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.